All right. So when looking at a problem like this, what we want to do is we're going to have to verify the identity. And the first thing we want to do is when looking at verifying identity is we just want to pick one side. All right? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove that one side is going to be equal to the other side. So what you're going to want to do is just isolate. The best kind of practice is just to isolate one side and just focus on that first side. Now remember, when focusing on the side, what I want you to do is simplify that one side so you can hopefully show that it looks like or that it's equal to the other side. So therefore, when trying to pick the side, the best practice is usually to pick the side that's going to be the most complicated. So by looking at these two sides, you can say, all right, well, obviously, this is a lot more complicated than this side. So let's work on, see if we can simplify this left side so then it would be equal to sine squared. So the first thing you're going to want to look at is, yes, you know you have a fraction, all right? And there's one way you could do it by splitting it up. This way, I'm going to, first way I'm going to show is, let's transform our uh, trigonometric identity and see what's going to happen. So when we rewrite this as a trigonometric identity, if I have sine squared, all right, because we know we want to get this as sine. So if I take a look at secant squared, we know that secant squared is going to be 1 plus tangent squared. So I could rewrite this as tangent squared plus 1 minus 1 divided by secant squared of theta equals sine squared of theta. Now, you might say, well, why don't you convert the other sine squared, right? Well, if I converted the other sine squared, then I would just have two tangents again. And two tangents is not going to help me get to sine, right? So I'm only going to convert the top just to kind of see what happens. I'm just playing around here. Well, what happens, this is nice because now I know that my plus 1 and negative 1, those cancel out to, one, to 0. Therefore, I'm now left with tangent squared divided by secant squared, these are all of theta, is equal to sine squared of theta. All right? Then what you can look at this is saying, all right, well, we need to get secant off the bottom so we can multiply by the reciprocal of secant, which is cosine. So if I multiply by cosine squared, now that's going to multiply to 1. Cosine squared over this is going to leave me with um, cosine squared of theta times tangent squared of theta equals sine squared of theta. And remember, tangent is what? Sine squared over cosine squared. So if I converted the tangent to sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta, you notice that my cosines divide into 1. Therefore, I'm finally left with sine squared of theta equals sine squared of theta. Which question? All right. Did you follow me from here? I multiplied by cosine over cosine. Oh, right? And then I multiplied cosine times tangent equals sine. Well, I converted tangent by using the quotient identity. Tangent is converted to sine over cosine. So therefore, the cosines divide to 1, so I'm just left with sine equals sine. I guess I probably could have wrote in equals sine of theta, sine squared of theta. OK? And therefore, you can say it's now been verified. Cool? Very good.